Hey guys, welcome back on my channel. Today I wanted to talk about uh, consumption versus investment and just my relationship with uh, luxury and also how you can save, you know, just a general topic about this. And the reason why I started thinking about making this video is because the other day I was lost over the internet and um, I came across a photo of uh, a British lady who was wearing a Balmain vest with a tiny short, pair of shorts and that looked unbelievably cute and because I'm petite that's the kind of looks that just look amazing on me and so I really got sucked into it and went into a whirlwind of trying to find and trace back that, uh, that vest uh, the Balmain vest is sold out everywhere but I ended up going and seeing Balmain blazers and then at some point I had, you know, the angel and devil and I was thinking, oh my god, it's a grind for a, for a blazer and I started remembering all these comments from people who are, you know, typically commenting on some YouTubers oh my god, you just bought this bag for five grand and there are people ch starving in Ohio or Iowa or Burma, Myanmar, whatever and so that got me thinking into how do some people consider something an investment or not and just how do you go about saving for luxury and how do you choose what you want to buy or not and so I thought I would share my own rules for this and uh, it's obviously just a reflection but I like every now and then making some of these videos because they also help me structure my own thinking when I think about something and try to make it into a video. I obviously don't prepare these videos, I don't have notes somewhere, but just talking through it also helps me structure it in my head. So, the first thing is, how do you save for luxury? The first thing is, you wanna know what you what you want to buy, so you always start by having a wish list. That's something I've, I've been doing for years. Some items on my wish list, I still haven't had them, but for me, it's good to have that visual or uh, structured reminder of the things that I want and maybe after two or three years I won't want it, want it anymore but uh, I usually am consistent in my wish list and I end up buying quite a few items on that so that's something that I always have in the back of my head I was having a notebook somewhere uh, there were even times where I used to make a photo album on my Facebook page where I would share my wish list and recently I've also done a video on that now that you have that wish list, be also realistic about the timeline where you expect to have it. And uh, because some items can not be realistically had within the next year and others you can have them in the next six months. But then the tough part is you really want to be realistic about how much disposable income you have. And so that's where you really want to know every detail about where your money goes. If you're making 2,000 euros a month, and you want to buy an item at 5,000 euros, then you already know there is only so much uh, you could do within the next six months because you have to pay, uh, assuming you're renting, you have to pay rent, you have to eat, etc., etc. So just be aware of exactly where your money goes. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I'm assuming you're not buying anything on credit. Um, that's a personal choice, but for me, I never buy anything on credit. If I cannot afford to buy an item, I just don't buy it but uh, I don't just go and charge it to my card and hope to pay it in three times etc uh, because to me any item that you buy this way should be uh, a necessity so the only time I would probably buy something that I cannot afford is if it's a necessity like medicine uh, like bills for for medical bills or food or something like that but if it's just for an item that I'm going to wear or eat out of pleasure, there is no way I'm gonna go in depth because of that. So that's just one of the rules that I have. Then, um, once you know exactly where your money goes, then you know how much disposable income you have after you, you remove to your savings, after you have your emergency fund, etc., etc. You know exactly how much you can have for leisurely spending every month, and then that becomes your basis. So if you can afford to have 200 euros a month, then you know that it's going to take you 25 months until you're able to buy that $5,000 bag. Um, and so that's when you start thinking. When you go to that store and you try to find that five grand, uh, buy that five grand bag, you're thinking, was this worth two years of working? Um, and that's how I, I think about everything actually. I know exactly how much my disposable income is per day 
And every time I buy something, I have it in my head that these sneakers are seven days of work. So seven days of working 16 hours a day, was that worth it? Is this worth it? Um, and so that's how I, I rationalize everything. My next thought on this topic is I'm very unapologetic about my choices. You guys know it by now. I, I never preface by saying, oh, I'm sorry, this is going to be leather, or I'm sorry, this is expensive, or I'm sorry, this is high-end, etc., etc. I never apologize for my choices. Um, but I'm also very careful about using the word investment. But not in a way of saying, you know, anything fashion, anything... Uh, that you buy that is overpriced is actually not an investment because you're wasting your money, etc., etc. Not in that sense, because you will have the very classic uh, example of people saying you want to buy gold because it appreciates, you don't want to buy, uh, for example, um, I wouldn't say a Birkin because that appreciates also, but you don't, wouldn't want to buy a dress. So if you have 2,000 euros and you want to buy gold versus a dress, you'd probably buy better off buying gold. That's not how I think about it because that's a classic way and it's valid obviously because if you buy a dress for God knows how long, how much, it's going to decay. Fabrics decay, they deteriorate over time. But that's not how I look at it. For me an investment is, is this something that betters my life in a way? That can be better in your life financially and that means uh, you buy something and then it grows and it brings you more income or just it, it appreciates in value, so that's the classic example. It can be sometimes just um, investing in your lifestyle, in your psychology. So for example, for me this, this comes with where I live. So my home, my environment is something that is very important to me. And so I was watching this YouTuber recently who she, people were commenting on how she moved to London. It was very, she was in Notting Hill and it was quite expensive and how that is just the biggest waste of money because she's not in a flat share. And flat share, that's basically being roommates. In London, they do that a lot because it's so expensive to live in central London. Um, but she wanted to live alone and she just took the cost. And for her, that was an investment because it's just, she, she lives there, she works there. And also, it's something that helped her psychologically overcome a tough moment. And I'm thinking, I'm in the same situation, except that it's not how I justify it. It's not because I need to work here or anything. It's just that, for me, my place, my personal space is a very important part of my well-being. And so I'm one of those people who are completely okay not ever, ever going to a restaurant, but then having a very nice little spot for me where I can go to every night and that's for me an investment in my well-being so that's definitely another way of looking at it and then it comes to everyday items you guys probably know that I don't buy expensive shoes the only exception was the Gucci and it's not because they were expensive um, that I bought them it's because I really like them they're unbelievably comfortable and so if you look at my shoe collection which is now about 15 pairs of shoes for all year, all weather. That includes sneakers, that includes sandals, everything. All my shoes are geared towards comfort. And so I'm willing to pay as much as it takes for comfort because I have problematic feet, very high arches, I have knee issues, I have bunions, you know, you name it. I got a lot. Um, but comfortable shoes are very important for me. Lucky for me, it's not super expensive to get them. And expensive is very relative because to some people 50 euros is a lot for a pair of shoes and for others eh, 300 euros is where they draw the line but for me most of my shoes are less than 100 euro and I really like that because that works for me that's a price point that has worked for me for the past few years and I'm very happy with it so for me buying shoes is an investment in my health I'm lucky that it's actually not that expensive compared to other things. When it comes to clothes, um, I don't tend to, to buy tons of super expensive clothes for my day-to-day. -day. And then there is the exception of my work clothes. And why is it is it so? Like, you would notice that a lot of my clothes for work are Hugo Boss. That's my go-to brand. Um, I, am, I, I have dresses that are worth 900 euros. I obviously didn't pay full price for them. Uh, maybe in a few years I would 
and not bat an eye but these are dresses that I obviously went to an outlet store and bought at a, at a huge discount they're still dresses where you have to pay around 300 euros each each um, but my collection is quite compact and these are my investment will they have their hold their value no so why are they an investment it's because when I wear them I am very productive just because I am in the right mindset now you can tell yourself you can work in a t-shirt and still be as productive that's amazing for you for me I'm that one person who needs to put on an armor I've been working for about 10 years now and so I have my own rituals that same goes for makeup I don't wear makeup because I'm not confident showing my skin you would have seen so many of my vlogs where I just go with my bare skin and that's what I do also on weekends the fact the act of putting on makeup for me is part of my work armor and I really feel that it's part of me conditioning my brain to know that now is business and so I don't care if I'm in a room filled with um, people who are not wearing a single drop of makeup and that usually happens a lot it happened to me all the time when I was in Germany uh, not a single drop of makeup in, in the entire uh, company that I that I was serving at the time uh, and so what I do it for myself and then we come to the last thing and this is this is the discussion that uh, I saw between my mentor and another guy who was uh, he was given my he was trying to you know act smart so my mentor is somebody that's one of my mentors but the, that's the oldest one uh, he's somebody who's who's got strong opinions and he can be very intimidating to be completely honest he's very intimidating and every now and then you will have these very young people trying to eagerly show that they're smart or that they have values or something like that and so they try to go into these long um, discussions with my with my mentor who doesn't usually give them much time but you know like the guy memorized an entire speech that he just vomited again uh, on us and he was talking about how governments have this conspiracy trying to make people spend more than they can and get everybody bankrupt and blah and blah and blah so my mentor has very, had very simple uh, answers to that and here we're not talking about uh, people living in abject poverty so the guy I was talking was um, was American uh, of Indian origin and he was complaining about uh, people buying the, the Starbucks co uh, coffee and things like that my mentor's answer got me thinking for a few days after that because when he, he did answer the part about governments and blah 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 but then he said something very interesting to the to the guy he said but I think where our lens different differ, differs is how you see consumption versus investment so to you you just put everything um, that is not uh, long term as a, as a consumption so for you the Starbucks coffee is a consumption clothing is a consumption just all of these things are consumption and then if you buy a house then it's an asset but for me I work a lot and uh, I work many hours a day and when I go to a Starbucks cafe and then I buy a coffee for me that's an investment because when I get the caffeine kick it's a it's an investment in my intellectual ability because I'm awake a bit more and for me I use it as a fuel for working and so I am being productive this is an input to my productivity during the day so when when my mentor said this uh, I think for a few days I just went around my apartment and I was just looking at all the, the things that I have and I was very pleasantly surprised to see that for a, bit, a large part I was quite good with my choices so there are a lot of things that many people consider as consumption like my teas and things like that but then I realized that they're just things that contribute to my state of mind where I'm most productive and so there are investment in my productivity I also looked at my apartment itself which I really like every now and then I complain that it gets cold or whatever or that it's too sunny but honestly the reason I took it is because it is sunny I love the I love the light how much light I get in here you notice this in my videos I have so much light um, and so yes I pay a bit the range is overpriced and it's an investment in my well-being because Brussels is so dark it's very difficult to find apartments that are this nice and that 
you know, fill this this uh, um, aesthetic of mine. And so this is the compass that I have been using going forward. Whenever I'm about to spend any amount of money, I'm just thinking, is this an investment or a con or a consumption? Consumption is okay. It's just that if I am in a position where I only have a limited amount of money to spend, I would always value an investment. And by investment, I mean the investment in, in such a way that it's not necessarily an asset, but is it something that helps either my state of mind, my productivity, my uh, mood in general, or something that is coming up in the future. And that has completely shifted the way I look at things. Now, I'm still not buying the, um, a Balmain blazer for a grand, but uh, I'm definitely looking for that little vest. Uh, I might not buy the Balmain one, but I really like the style of this of the thing. And maybe in a few years, if I can afford it, why not buy the Balmain one? Uh, if it's going to put me in the right state of mind. So for now, I'm going to add that item to my wish list, and we'll see in two years whether it's still there. That's also the the plus of having a classic style because I have such a boring classic style that I don't really follow, uh, you know, fads. So this vest is from I think three years ago. That's why it is sold out everywhere. But I definitely hope that it will be brought back in in the future. Actually, coming to it, I don't think I've ever had such a small wardrobe. Um, I am still working on that capsule, but what I notice is that my good dresses are really standing the test of time because I also look at the materials. They're, they're old wool, and this is something that some people might not be aware of, but I wear wool even in summer. And don't think of wool as something that is, you know, chunky and fat. You know, the finest yarns of wool are as lightweight as a t-shirt material but it's um, it helps with maintaining your body temperature so if you're cool you're cool if you're hot you're hot but it's just something that you can wear all year round which is also why I get a lot of bang for my bucks because I wear the same dresses all year. So you guys that was the today's reflection I have promised on my Facebook page that I will be doing a lot more of these videos because some of you guys asked me to do a sort of podcast but I just didn't feel like talking and not looking anywhere. And so I still like the idea of just looking you guys in the eye, staring, <laughs> and uh, doing these reflections. So this is meant to be a podcast, it's just that I thought I'd do it on video. I hope you like these topics. And if you have any suggestions for additional topics, just let me know in the comments and I will try to, you know, pencil it. I have my diary here and I'm trying to start writing topics as they come to my brain inspiration but it's always helpful to have your ideas because then I know what you guys want to talk about and I like also seeing the interaction that happens in the discussion section um, so yeah that would be it for today and I will see you in my next video take care